Hello, friends. Welcome back. We are already on part 33, which is the length of the base game's walkthrough already, and we still have a long way to go. So, yeah, so for those of you that are surprised we've gone this long, there's just way more to do in Spaced Out. Generally, why I like Spaced Out more than the base game is because there's so much depth and so many different things to do. But yeah, we're just going to keep going here. Uh, a couple of changes that happened from our last video is we have this material warmer going on right now. And there were a couple of mistakes that I made. Um, one of which, well, this part really isn't a mistake. I just tuned these numbers up a little bit just to get this flowing as consistently as possible. So uh, my numbers now are, if it's above 18, I'm going to let it through. If the water coming in that is hot ever gets below 25, I'm going to let it through. And if the water on this far right side is ever below 30, I'm going to ask for some more hot water. So now we have a pretty much consistent stream of stuff coming through here. Uh, whereas before it was kind of, and it's being blocked up because there's a couple other things that are shipping on the same line. So, but yeah, it's still coming through pretty consistently. So we got a nice throughput of this now. The other thing that I did, and this is always a trick that you can do, is if you need more area to exchange temperatures with stuff, but you don't have enough like water or liquid or whatever to exchange the temperature, you can just place metal tiles down and have the material run through the metal tiles. It's actually more efficient to have it go through the metal tiles, so it kind of just depends on what resource you have available. So in theory, you could make this metal tile area like six or seven rows thick if you had a lot of extra refined metal sitting around, which we eventually will because we get it for free from volcanoes. You could do that and it would exchange the temperature a lot better than it would in water. So that's another trick that you can do. So just doing some small optimizations to kind of get stuff through here a little bit better. One other thing that I really should have mentioned in the last video is the checking everything but liquefiables is not a great idea because I forgot about abyssalite. And the problem with abyssalite is it will basically not exchange temperature at all. Oh, I still want the rest of this stuff. I shall, still should take that. Uh, it will not exchange temperature at all. So you will eventually get everything blocked up because a piece of abyssalite will sit right here and it will never change temperature. So that can definitely be a problem. Make sure to uh, not send out any of your abyssalite. There's not really a purpose to send it out anyway. So yeah, definitely want to get that fixed up. So all I'm doing on this asteroid in the meantime is getting everything swept up. I'm going to mine out the rest of this as well. By the way, I haven't mentioned these, just these carbon dioxide geysers. There's no real purpose for these, so I just kind of wall them off. Um, I think you know how I feel about these if you've seen some of my other videos, but yeah, just wall those things off and don't worry about them. So yeah, we're kind of on our way to getting all of our volcanoes done. Uh, this one is now getting filled up and is now allowed to operate, so it's on its way. Uh, just have a little bit of a water mix up here. I might fix this, I might not. We'll kind of see how things go here. Uh, this can happen sometimes, like a little piece of clean water gets inside the salt water because your filtration might have been hooked up wrong for like two seconds or something like that. That can always happen, but just going to alleviate all the gas to get out of here and this should be totally fine. This might all condense down to one little spot and if it does, then that'll be fine. Uh, the other one, yeah, just waiting for water here too. So we're almost done with all the metal volcanoes, which is kind of the last thing that we need to do on this asteroid. The only other thing we would need to do on this asteroid is mine the rest of it out, start shipping all the rest to our central point. Then we're going to set something up to start shipping all of our stuff to get it ready to take back to our main colony. Why did that not mop? Maybe I selected the wrong thing. I'm like, attack the water! Ah! So what I'm going to do, uh, I guess we could just do this right now, is we could just set up a couple of bins that are going to be used to ship all the stuff that we need out to a rocket platform, like right here, um, so that we can send everything back to our main base. And this will kind of go a little dormant in the same way that this one has gone dormant, where I have one or two duplicates kind of back here doing the tasks that I need them to do. Um, eventually they'll both go down to one, so there's only one duplicate living there kind of keeping things running. Uh, so yeah, that's the, all we want to do on this asteroid now is that. Why do I have a bunch of melted... Maybe I accidentally shipped some ice up here or something. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, we're just going to ship all the stuff that we need over to one spot. So I'm just going to run some shipping lines over here. And I guess I should probably do this and run that one there. And then the second one, just going to kind of run it here. Going to drop both of them off right there. And this is going to be all the stuff that I want to take back. I'm going to send to these two bins. And I'm sending them out like two by two just because it's going to ship a little bit faster than just one at a time. 
And by a little bit, a little bit, I literally mean like double. So all the stuff that we will want to take, we should mark here. Um, so let's kind of take a look at what we have. So let me do a see all. Let's kind of go through what we have. Phosphorite, yeah, we'll probably want to take that back so that we can use it for generating some rad bolts. So we can kind of just keep both of these open at the same time if we need to. Let's see. Oxygen, we don't want to ship that back. Atmo suits, sure. We're not really going to use that here. We have plenty here already, so let's send our Atmo suits back. Coal, we need. Oxalite, we should keep here. Salt and rust, I don't think I'm going to need, but I'm going to keep it here for a little while, just in case we need an extra oxygen source. Bleach stone, yeah, I'll just kind of leave it here. Refined carbon, I guess we could take that. So, where is this consumable ore? There we go. The rest of this we want to take. No eggs. I'm just going to leave all the eggs here for now. Um, we could potentially talk about, like, pinch rows and stuff like that, but we don't need extra lime. We should be totally fine. Clay, yeah, we'll probably want to take that back. Dirt doesn't really have a purpose back at our main base, so I'm just going to leave that here just so that we don't have to clog anything up. Uh, the rest of this, this is all food. Sand, we're going to need some. But we're getting some anyway, so I'm not going to worry about taking the sand. That's kind of unusual or unnecessary. Anyway, I'll kind of go through this list and take everything that we need. The most important things is going to be a lot of this ore. Uh, the metal ore is stuff that I want to get off of here and onto the other asteroid so that it can start going along with these other rocket missions. Same thing with the refined metal. That was the whole point of coming here in the first place. So once we get everything stabilized, we should have a good amount of this flowing through and we should be able to send it back and on our rocket mission. So I'm not going to go through every single thing just because it's a lot to do in a walkthrough, but just kind of think about the stuff that you want to send back and just start allowing your uh, shipping system to send it over to a place that it will be ready to go. So that'll do it for that asteroid. Uh, this asteroid is also pretty close to being done. Uh, all the stuff that was down here has pretty much been swept out and collected in one place, so if I need to get it out, I can. I'm also producing some extra sand here. Um, I might as well give a duplicate a job on one of these fringe asteroids that they can do while they're by themselves, so they're not just idling. Uh, I need to start sending my berry sludge back, by the way. So yeah, this asteroid is basically going to turn into like a dormant production space for uh, berry sludge and for sand. That's pretty much all that's going to need to be done here. The rest of it will just kind of run itself, so we should be good on that. All right, finally, we've taken the long way of getting here, but I want to set up a Dreco Ranch. I've been talking about this a lot. Um, the good thing is that we've been storing a lot of chlorine, so because we have all this chlorine, we can use it to fill up a Dreco Chamber, which I'm just going to use uh, to start getting some Dreco eggs going, which will help our food situation a little bit. More specifically, it'll save more berry sludge for... Uh, going out on other asteroids and also it'll give us a source of eggs just in case we need to take a food source food source with us that we can't grow there natively so that's gonna be the plan for one of these other asteroids the other thing we're gonna need to be doing in the meantime is we're gonna need to check out our star map and we need to find these other asteroids before we can actually go there so I think we'll save that for the next video let's just focus on the Dreco ranch this time and the Dreco Ranch is somewhere my duplicates are going to be spending a lot of time, so I kind of want this to be pretty centralized. I think I want it here, which is one of the benefits of having a setup like this um, in like a grid pattern, is if something is in the way, I can always move it to get it out of the way and move it somewhere else. Actually, now that I'm looking at this, this teleporter's in the way. Let me actually move this. I'll move this uh, block of power kind of over into the corner here so that it's out of the way, because my duplicates don't need to spend any time here. But my duplicates will be farming and ranching and doing that kind of stuff. So I guess we could put our Dreco Ranch here. Let's just do that. So I'm going to take all this stuff and move it out of the way and kind of get it over here. So I'll do that off camera really quick. Okay, we got all of our power stuff moved. Let's get this turned into a Dreco Ranch really quickly. So we already have all the insulated tiles around this area that we're going to want. I just need to replace a few of them and we will start getting the rest of this stuff built out. I'm going to do three levels uh, that are going to be for this Dreco Ranch, uh, only because I don't need a lot of production out of this. I just need a continuous production of eggs so that I can grab them at any particular time and take them off to the places that they're needed. So just going to build... whoops, undo all my progress with that. Just going to build something pretty simple here. Um, I know this is flooded with carbon dioxide, so I guess we should probably just open up both sides and let all this stuff drain. 
Um, it'll just go down into our ventilation system anyway, so... Oh, I need to move this down. I guess I need to hit the bottom. Yeah, there's a lot to do. Let's see. So, Drecko Ranch. Um, the way that I like to do it is I don't really care that much about regenerating their scales, so I'm just going to keep it pretty simple. Um, all I'm going to do is create an entrance point with the water lock, because the inside we're going to just make out of chlorine. So just something like this to close it off. And then I'm going to measure out to see how big these rooms will be. So this one's going to be 28 plus 44. Uh, that's reasonable enough size. I still need to leave enough space to get our suits here. So maybe... F I could probably move this over just a little bit. I kind of want to max out the size of these as much as I can, knowing that I won't be able to max out the ones that are in here just because of the shape of this. So on the left side, and the reason I was measuring out this side, is because I'm going to destroy these and just make a way for my duplicates to get up and down uh, throughout this. And then each of these levels is going to be their own terrarium. This vertical area will also be a terrarium, or part of the bottom terrarium. So I'm just building it this way so that if the Drekos drop anything, it's still all going to fall down into this bottom chamber. But we can get this as kind of just some bonus space to make this area a little bit larger. So, just gonna throw a fire pole in here too, just so my duplicates can move around a little bit faster, because this will be a significant sink of my duplicates' time. But, uh, I think it's pretty worth it, so not worried too much. Just gonna leave a couple spaces here. On each of these levels, I'm just gonna create some mesh tiles for the stuff that needs to sit in here. So, just gonna have the basic stuff for ranching, which is just gonna be a grooming station a uh, and a critter drop-off. So, just need those two things. So each room is just going to look something like this. I guess I could keep that like that. And let me drop in the stations really quickly. Let's measure this out. So this is now 56, 60, plus 20. Okay, that's good enough. We'll eventually add a door here to uh, declare this as a room. And I'll just keep it open because the Drekos can't go through the water anyway. Well, I guess they can. They just won't on their own. So that'll keep them in there. Come on, game. There we go. Inside each one of these, we are just going to be planting balm lilies, because balm lilies don't require anything to grow. And that'll be a nice uh, way to avoid using too many resources taking care of all this stuff. So on the inside of each of these, I'm just going to place some farm tiles after I give those initial three spaces for the uh, stations that we need in order to keep this place running. I don't want this tile here. I'd rather have airflow. Uh, okay, so let's put down the stations. So we're gonna need a grooming station in each of them. So there's one, two, and three. And then we'll also need a critter drop-off, which is located in food, which is weird. Put those three in there. And then at the bottom of this one, we're also gonna take up a little bit of space by putting down our farm tiles. This is actually gonna be a little bit smaller than I thought, and we can move the door over here, actually, just to regain those spaces, because I want to hold as many Drekos as I can in these chambers, and I think I should be able to hold seven in all of them. As far as the number of these farm tiles, you might just need to dial it in depending on how many Drekos you have in there, so if I need more, I'll just kind of build it over here on this level and build some more right here. This level, I would just have to reduce the population, because there's not really anywhere else to put it, but we don't need to, like, obsess over every single exact count of Drekos either. So, I don't want to quite close this all off yet, because I still want my duplicates to be able to work. Uh, we will need some water, so let's go ahead and start running that from one of our vents. So, it looks like there's a path for clean water here. Oh, it's actually pretty close. Cool. There we go. Create ourselves a liquid lock. Then I'm going to create some stations for suits, because my duplicates are not going to be able to breathe in here. So, I'm just going to do something like this. And note, by the way, this is very different than how you would do a Draco chamber that was meant to produce plastic. This is not really meant to produce anything other than having Draco eggs ready for these, some of these other asteroids. Um, if it were plastic, you would do this totally differently. Um, this would be centered more around mealwood rather than the balm lilies because the mealwood is what the plastic Drekos eat. I guess they're glossy Drekos, whatever. Okay, so... The next thing we're going to need to do is once the water is down in here, which we will get here in just a second, but I'm going to obviously cut just so we're not sitting here watching something fill up. Um, once it gets there, we'll be able to seal all this off, and then I'm going to start vacuuming this out because we only want chlorine to be in here. So this is kind of a multi-step process. Um, while my duplicates are doing this and while we're waiting for this to happen, let's go back to the other uh, asteroid really quickly, and I'll provide a couple of clarifications of things that I missed. 
So one thing that I missed is um, eventually this water is going to produce enough to the point that we have too much of it stored. And the problem is that if too much of it gets stored, this stuff in here starts getting damaged because things are too cold and they start freezing the pipes. So a little augmentation that I made is I hooked up an automation wire to this last tank in the chain. And that tank would need to be requesting water before the system would actually run. So I'm just running an automation wire from here up into this. And now this is on an AND gate, meaning that we need to have water, which I need to change this again. We need to have water and the uh, this liquid reservoir needs to be requesting it. So if I have a big line of it, now this will only turn on if it's actually needed. If it's not, then we won't do anything. We could do something similar for this. So I, I have a second line for where all the clean water goes, just kind of sitting down in these tanks. And if these tanks ever start getting low, that's when I can start... Um, requesting more uh, just to say that yeah there's not this aren't these aren't entirely full so now you're allowed to run the system as it would um, otherwise don't because uh, we're just going to start getting back up some problems with that i guess we can run it up here yeah we'll just put this on an and gate also i need to put a ladder there so my duplicates can actually reach that build but yeah just this on an and gate too ought to help it out so that you're not getting overrun with water and we have the exact opposite problem that we had before. But at least we know all this is working because we're getting a lot of water and more than we actually need. Um, all of our volcanoes are taken, so we don't really need any big pools of water anymore. It's just the upkeep on the blossoms at this point. Or if you wanted to run like an electrolyzer setup or something like that, you could. Even though you should get plenty from the oxalite showers that happen. So I just wanted to provide a couple of those clarifications. Did I buy enough time here? No. All right. Well, let me give my duplicates some time to uh, get this all done and get this uh, tank filled up with water so we can start backing it out. I guess I could just at least set up the pumps for right now so we don't need to, like, watch me turn the pumps on because that's not very exciting. I'll usually just put a couple of them in here, just something like this, and just have them sent out and uh, be connected to a high-pressure vent just to assure that they can actually run. Once they are quite low, you don't have to necessarily get every little thing out. Uh, but once they're quite low in terms of pressure in here, then we're going to switch back over to chlorine. And I will come back when it's time to do that. But I don't want to let these run until we've actually sealed this off anyway. So let me just edit another part on really quick. Okay, this is mostly vacuumed out. There's some other stuff we need to do before we start running chlorine in here, chlorine in here though. That is, we need a kind of a wrangling area, similarly to how we have for our hatches, but we need it for Drekos now. So I'm just going to start building into this ice biome a little bit, because there's no sleet wheat down here. I'm okay shaving off just a little bit of it, just because this is an area my duplicates are going to be spending a lot of time in. I could also put it over here, I guess. Um, hmm. Just because it'd be a shorter trip to where they would need to go. Yeah... Mm. Mm. Okay, we'll go here. So we're going to do this here. Uh, we'll just kind of make a spot to put this in. And we're going to need this heavy watt wire to retain, so I'm just going to get rid of that. This is going to cause some brownouts for a little while, but that's okay. So we just need a little bit of space here to create something that's really similar to this room. Um, it does need to be four tiles high, which is the only thing that I'm worried about. But I think if I just kind of cut out a part right here, that should be okay. This is only double layered so that um, this doesn't break the tile. What you can do, by the way, and this is something that I've really never talked about before, um, you can actually line everything with these airflow tiles, and these airflow tiles will never get broken. Um, I consider this a little bit of an exploit because there is a way to store basically every single, like, all of your liquid that you want in one square or something like that, or some really tiny room. Um, I don't really like that that much. I don't find that to be very interesting or very fun. It also kind of like circumvents the entire intention of it, so I don't know. Not really a big fan of that, but I'll make an exception just for this one spot, only because we just need this one space to be open. So I'm going to replace that with an airflow tile, just so that uh, it doesn't break if we need to make this room a little bit taller. Yeah, I guess you can get away with something a little sneaky every once in a while, but I don't know. There's a lot of stuff you can do in this game that kind of like short circuits the design of it. And I'm, I'm not super... I don't find that to be very fun. I find it more fun just to be like 
rolling with what they had intended instead of finding some way to exploit it. But that's just me. If you want to do exploits like that and create these like super overpressurized areas with these airflow tiles, you can totally do that if you want. All right, so anyway, all we're going to need here, let me prioritize this a little bit faster so we can build the rest of it, but it's going to be really similar to this room. The only reason it's a little bit larger is because we might as well shear these Drekos if we have them in all one confined area. So that way we'll get a continuous production of reed fiber. I'm not actually sure where our reed fiber sits right now, so let's see. Reed. It's only 67, so yeah, this is probably a good idea to do this anyway, so... Let's get a station in here that's for shearing, and I can't ever remember if this is in food or stations. Here we go. It's called shearing station. I guess it makes sense that it's in station, so there you go. Alright, so we just need one tile up here that's going to be tall enough to put our critter drop off on top of, because we put it on this door to let us know if it's actually allowed to start moving Drekos back into this room. Same exact thing as we did with our hatch ranching. So if you haven't seen this before, I'll kind of abbreviate it really quickly. Just going to create a space there. We need all the same buildings in this room, but it's going to be very compact. I might even need another space to open this up. It's going to be pretty compact. Actually, we're going to need even another one. Hmm. Okay, I guess we're using all these airflow tiles. Whatever. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and place this here. Exactly the same way as we did it before. We'll put a conveyor loader there. We need to make sure this reaches everywhere, which it does. We also need a drop-off. We need a way to tell if this should still be getting more eggs. So we're going to need some automation here that's going to be for a critter sensor to make sure we actually have enough eggs in here to keep our population sustained. Whoops, not the Rogan. Let's see, do we have everything that we need from this room? Yeah, I think so. We just need to run the lines down here. So the eggs are basically just going to drop off in this little spot. Is this actually big enough for a stable? Let me see. Uh, where is this? Stable. How big does this need to be? 12 tiles. Yeah, it should be fine. Okay, cool. So, all we should really need to ship out of here is anything other than the eggs. If the eggs get in here, we just want to let them sit until they hatch. And if my duplicates need more critters for some of these rooms, they're just going to grab it from this room. Same as idea as we did with the hatch setup. Uh, let's go ahead and set up our critter sensors, so one in each of these little terrarium areas. And if any one of them needs more, it's going to allow this door to close so that this will work and my duplicates can actually move it from there. So let's see, we need an ore gate here, so if this one or this one is requesting. And then also if this one or any of the bottom two are requesting, we need this door to close. So can hook it up like that. Use a not gate, because we want it to be closed when we're uh, needing more, not open. So we need to invert that before it gets there. And yeah, there you go. So just something like this. The sizes of these rooms for these Drekos. 84 tiles, 84 tiles, 79. Uh, I think all of those should hold 7, except for the bottom one I think is only going to be able to hold 6. Once again, I'm doing math live, and that's not a good idea, but... Let's just set up the requirements for these, and we don't want to actually start moving these in here quite yet, though. So, let's just set up the numbers, and we'll set up the actual, like, request for them later. Whoops, these other ones could be seven. And seven. The reason I don't want to yet is I want to make sure that we have our bomb lilies growing before the Drekos get in here. Uh, otherwise, if the Drekos are tamed, they're going to start starving if they don't have any food, and we don't want to do that. Oh, also this might be... Oh, I can just move this. Okay. Trying to think about setting up our shipping in here, too, because if we have stuff going on in here and the Drekos drop eggs or whatever, we definitely want to ship it out. So I'm going to add all that stuff, too. We don't necessarily need to watch that part. But I just wanted to review this part again really quick. Uh, the only th other thing we need to do is auto wrangle surplus on this one that's in here. Max of one and just set it to a critter that you will never have inside here. A beta. Sure, why not? So that way, if this door is closed, and this will only be closed if any of these critter sensors are uh, telling it to be closed, then my duplicates will be allowed to grab stuff from here and move it to the other room. These critter sensors just need to be set the exact same way as the actual drop-off point. So if this is ever below seven critters, then uh, I want it to send a signal to be like, hey, this room needs more. So yeah, um, let me let my duplicates get some more of this stuff done. I'm going to wait just a little bit longer for this to get more vacuumed out. 
Then we'll start adding chlorine, we'll add the balm lilies, and we'll add the heating elements that we need to heat these up. So that'll be interesting. So yeah, give me just a sec. Okay, everything's vacuumed out. Got my uh, shipping stuff in here. It's not turned on yet because I didn't want it to start breaking because there was too little gas in here. It would overheat. But the chlorine is now coming in just from the tanks that we had set up a long time ago that have been feeding our food system to clean our food. For now, this is just for to serve as an atmosphere for all these balm lilies. But the problem here, once again, the temperature. Uh, we definitely need to raise that. So let's see how many balm lilies we actually have on hand. Oh, there we go. We have plenty. 126. The problem with these things is they need to be up at least at 35 degrees Celsius, and we're like not even close with chlorine. So the best way to do this is to find a heat source that is uh, based on liquid. So if you still have hot water sitting in these areas, you could use this, but this is still not quite hot enough, I would say. I want something a little bit hotter than that. This is out. So there's not a whole lot for me to work with right now to heat that up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the petroleum that's been coming in because this petroleum comes in pretty hot. It doesn't look like it here, but on the other side, it should be much warmer. Which, let's see where it's getting sent out. Uh, here we go. So once being sent out of here, it's at 74C. So if it's anywhere near that, that should be plenty to heat this up. Who's trapped? What's going on? Oh. Hmm. Okay. Well, that'll resolve itself eventually. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, I'm, I'm just going to use that heat, and in order to get enough flow to heat this up, I'm just going to uh, kind of run it down here, and then I'm going to create a tank that's just going to hold petroleum down here, just because it'll eventually get burned by the petroleum generator anyway. So I'm just going to use something that can kind of resist that heat. And I'm just going to run a line down here and kind of snake it through these tiles. So I'll connect this all up in just a bit. This is going to take a little while because there's so much stuff in the way. So I'm just going to run some radiant pipe in here as soon as it gets there. Run it through a bunch of these tiles in the middle. And as long as that heats up enough, then we should be good. Just going to do that, and then I will eventually run it out and down into this tank. Um, I think a full tank worth of this, once this is filled with chlorine, should be enough. Um, all the material in here is definitely not going to help in terms of cooling it down, because this material actually holds quite a bit of heat. So I may actually just turn these on and let these things sweep everything out first and then uh, start to heat everything up. Otherwise, we're just going to be paying the expense to heat stuff that we don't really care about anymore. It's just going to get shipped out, so might as well do that. Yeah, uh, mm, I don't know why. I just don't really care that much about this. <laughs> All right, we'll still get out of there eventually. Okay, whoops, wrong asteroid. So, uh, I'm going to get that all set up. That'll take a little while for all this stuff to get swept out, but I will hook up to petroleum, and when I get everything out of the way, we'll definitely show that part. The other thing that we need to do is we need to hook up our shipping lines here. So, the shipping lines are going to get really messy. Um, there's a lot of stuff being shipped right now because of the other things that we've been doing. So, for this one, this is going to be for our Dreco eggs. Just going to have it come down. It's going to hop over a bunch of lines here, and it's going to come over to the left... Uh, I guess right here is probably fine. I'm gonna come through this, and like we typically will do, if it wants it, because we need to ch oh, we need to set our eggs here. If we're below, like, I don't know, 16 eggs, then we will let that thing open. Otherwise, it will be closed. It will pass this. I'm just gonna create a bridge just to force a direction. And I'm gonna need to get it all the way back up here, because this is where the drowning tank is. So this is going to be kind of an interesting adventure to get everything all hooked up, but that's kind of what's going to happen when you have such complicated uh, shipping setups here. So I think I'll just run it through those over this, I guess up here, and we can just go up this line to eventually drop it off to where it's supposed to go. There we go. Just need to add all the bridges and stuff that are supposed to be there. So let me add those once I start the petroleum flow after they get everything in here. Uh, we'll come back for the last part of this video. Alright, the pipe kerfuffle has been resolved. We're gonna go ahead and get some petroleum fl flowing through here, but more specifically, it needs to be the hot petroleum. If you remember earlier in the run, we actually started to cool our petroleum because it was causing, um, 
some issues for us. And if we're going to be storing it at our base, we don't want to be storing it at that temperature. But now I want the hot petroleum. So I'm just going to hook it up to the line here where it's supposed to start getting pulled. And as it get, gets through here, we're going to start to see the temperature rise. Um, a lot of this is going to be kind of cool because it's been sitting in uh, pipes for so long and not getting used. So it should gradually raise as some of these other packets come through. And then we can kind of see how it's going to impact. There we go. Starting to hit some 55, 61s, 76. There you go. So yeah, starting to come through here. And note that I'm using the radiant pipe and I'm running it right through the tiles. Because the tiles are going to be a lot better to uh, absorb the heat from this than the chlorine will. The chlorine is notably a terrible transmitter of heat. But... All we want to do is run enough petroleum through here or some other type of hot liquid. If you have hot water, hot salt water, whatever, uh, that will totally work as a substitute. Um, or if you could have this border, like a steamy area, that would also help. But yeah, you can see the temperature of the farm tile rising quite a bit. Starting to get some redness in here, which is definitely what we need. I just don't know if it's going to be enough because it's going to have to fill up this tank. If we need to fill up more, we definitely can, and this is obviously not an ideal situation. I would much rather use the water that's from here that's going to be much hotter, but it's just not hot enough. Uh, the temperature that we want these things to be at is like 35, but I'd rather get into like the 50 or so area, just to assure that it's going to be enough to cool down the temperature of everything else in here as well. So, top row looks like it's ready. We can start sending some Drecos in here. So I'm just going to set those, uh, basically send them over here whenever you got them. I'll raise the priority on these a little bit so our rancher comes in here and takes care of it quickly. There we go. And I just need to capture some Drekos that are around the map, which ideally, if you hadn't killed them or anything like that, there should be quite a few of them. We just need to find them. So there's one on the ceiling here. My duplicates can go grab these as they are needed. So looks like there's another one there. Uh, yeah, not too exciting to watch me search for Drekos, but that's kind of the idea. Uh, basically just grab them from around the map, wherever you can find them, and we'll start our population in the rooms that actually have balm lilies that are growing because they're at a good temperature now. The max temperature for these is like 85, and I don't think our petroleum even comes out at 85, so we should be totally fine in terms of the temperature that we're going to get down here. So, yeah, if that's going to fill up too much, we can always fill up a couple more. And then we can prefer that our petroleum generators burn this before burning any other petroleum that's coming in. Uh, just using some of our typical plumbing tactics. So, yeah, we can go ahead and get those hooked up really quickly. But that's kind of the idea of uh, getting these Drekos into a position where we can start ranching them. And getting a lot more Dreco eggs because we're going to need them for a couple of other places that we're going to be going later in the game. So, anyway, yeah, that'll pretty much do it. Thank you very much for watching. I think in the next one we're going to be setting up our last few things that we need to do on this asteroid. We have basically mined everything out and it's just a matter of shipping everything back to a central location for right now. Uh, we're going to use our duplicates here to do one more thing which is an automated setup to deal with all the oxalite showers that come. Because if there's only one duplicate left behind here they're not going to be able to manage this by themselves. So we're going to have to automate that. So we'll do that. We'll start getting duplicates off of this asteroid and we're going to start preparing to explore our star map because we need to figure out where we're going next. Next. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you back here in the next part really soon.